Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center in North Platte, Nebraska. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to take in the panoramic view of Union Pacific's Bailey Yard, the world's largest rail yard from our eight story tower. The Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center is a testament to the iron horse, the locomotives, the trains covering 23 states running from coast to coast with the cargo that touches our lives in every way, every day. The Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center, more trains than you can keep track of. Uh, the interesting thing about North Platte, uh, especially for the railroad, is historically uh, here in North Platte, it was a natural fit for a stop-off place, and that was way even before the railroad. Uh, settlers going east coast, west coast, using the various trails uh, going to the west coast primarily and then coming back east, would use North Platte as a stopover. And uh, so when Grenville Dodge was surveying the railroad for Union Pacific, uh, he came to North Platte, immediately saw that uh, it had a lot of advantages. Number one, uh, it was flat. He could foresee uh, the future of a rail yard being here because it was a midpoint for Union Pacific. In other words, trains going from Chicago to Salt Lake City, North Platte was in the middle. For trains going from Denver to Omaha, North Platte was in the middle. So it made perfect sense that he could eventually see a rail yard here that would serve the entire railroad. North Platte has always been a railroad town, or should we say, it was a railroad town before it was North Platte. It was known as Hell on Wheels Town in 1866, and by 1867, mainline operations began. It also included a major shop facility for repair of Union Pacific trains. It remains a major repair facility today. The Bailey Yard was named after Ed Bailey. Well, Ed Bailey was the president of the Union Pacific from 1965 to 1971. And a lot of people wonder why and why it was named after Bailey, because Mr. Bailey had a lot of vision in mind. He wanted to make sure the railroad functioned and made sure it was going to go. This is the world's largest classification yard. And when we say the world's, this is only one like it in the world. It's eight miles long, approximately a mile and a half to two miles wide, and it goes 24-7. Uh, Bailey Yard is, is made up of about 2,500 employees. We run approximately 150 trains a day through here. That's broken down by uh, 60 manifest, 70 coal, and then you have your auto, intermodal, grain, and ore. We process about 10,000 cars a day through the yard. Uh, we service about 300 locomotives a day. The two hump yards hump about 1,500 cars each a day. The two hump yards is a, is a key component. Uh, the other is the run-through operation, you know, how we process these trains through here quickly. Some of our trainings actually came from NASCAR pit crews of how well we can process these things through here as quick as we can and how we work together as a team with different departments on trains. And then of course the, the just the magnitude of the number of trains equates to the number of locomotives and the number of cars that need service, that need repair. It, it's really a key of how you efficiently manage your resources and also how effective you are in uh, classifying the cars on the origin side and uh, moving the trains through here on the run-through side. A manifest train is made up of mixed rail cars, from box cars, tank cars, piggyback cars, and so on. An intermodal train hauls trunk and ship containers across the U.S. Bulk trains carry grain, soda ash, and ore. A run-through train doesn't have any cars to pick up or deliver to Bailey Yard. You'll see them all from the Golden Spike Tower, a panoramic view of the world's largest train yard. You have 36 lowered coal trains going east every day and 36 empties going west. You average about it, uh, and a regular freight train will have 138 cars on it. Through the widest part of the yard, there's 301 sets of rails out there. That's enough track to make another main line from here to Omaha or to Cheyenne. Union Pacific has been the lifeblood of North Platte since it was organized as a city in 1874, eight years after General Dodge platted Union Pacific's rail yard on this very site. It's also been the lifeblood of thousands of employees. The railroad courses through the veins of first, second, and third generations that have relied on the railroad to support themselves and their families. Dale Jurgensen is just one. He began with Union Pacific in 1940. He was a conductor. 
Well, it wasn't anything like the conductors that were here when I first come out. The conductors when you first had that, they really grouchy, crabby old men. By the time I got there, that's all pretty well changed. It was a little bit more like riding down the highway in your auto. We had the fireman, the engineer, and the brakeman. I had to check our orders to see if they were right. It was a fun job when we were there. We had a good time, I enjoyed it. We had to retire at age 70. And there were lots of them that didn't want to have to retire at age 70. They preferred to keep working. It was their, it not only was their job, it was their life. It was many people's life. Charles Grigsby lived aboard the City of Portland passenger train as a dining car steward until passenger service ended in 1971. After I got out of the service, I needed a job and I applied and they gave me a job at the Union Pacific. I wound up on the passenger train as a dining car steward on the city of Portland. I run from Portland to Chicago and back. Dining car was my responsibility. It was supposed to be kept up at all times. It would start about five o'clock in the morning. The tables had to be set. My thing was to see that they was satisfied and that the tables were clean and ready for them. Just a general host. Many people's only exposure to trains is waiting for them at the railroad crossing. We see the train engine or locomotive, and oftentimes we count the cars to pass the time. But those big locomotives, now there's something special. Locomotives in our industry, they're, uh, they're kind of interesting because everyone thinks that it's the diesel engine that's actually powering the locomotive. The best way to describe how a locomotive works is it's much like a model train set. A uh, locomotive actually runs on electricity. The diesel engine turns a huge electric generator, creates electricity, and the uh, engineer, he adjusts the amount of voltage going to the electric motors that are connected to the wheel. In different areas across our railroad, we have diesel repair facilities. Now here at Bailey Yard is one of our largest. And here uh, we have electricians, we have mechanics uh, that work on the various parts that make up these locomotives. So uh, here they will take a diesel engine apart when it's time for a, a overhaul. Uh, you have electricians that work on the electrical generators as well as the motors that physically drive uh, the locomotive. Uh, the mechanics here are able to change the very heavy components uh, of a diesel electric engine uh, that we use on the railroad today. At Bailey Yard, they have two hump yards or elevated mounds that they utilize to sort rail cars. Each car is released from the train down the hump. As the car proceeds downward, retarders slow the car to the perfect speed to couple with the train taking it to its final destination. Well, we have two different hump yards in, inside the yard, um, two different types. One we refer to as an inline yard and one that's more of a side-by-side. -side. The humps themselves are made up of a receiving yard and a departure yard. The, the bowl tracks is really the tracks where the cars are actually classified. Each bowl track has a specific uh, destination. So one track may be for Little Rock, one may be for Parsons, uh, one may be for Kansas City. And so as those cars are humped into the bowl tracks, that's kind of the term classification. We kind of get them all in the tracks that they go in so that they can meet their outbound uh, schedules to make destination. And there you have it, a brief glimpse of what you see from atop the Golden Spike Tower. We hope to see you soon at the Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center in North Platte, Nebraska. More trains than you can keep track of.